Welcome to this comprehensive video guide on ACLS. In this video, we will delve into the protocols for responding to cardiac arrest, both non-shockable and shockable rhythms, as well as symptomatic bradycardia. By following the American Heart Association's algorithms, you will gain a clear understanding of the essential steps to take in these critical situations. Let's begin with the basics of ACLS. Immediate CPR initiation. In any cardiac arrest situation, immediate recognition and intervention are of utmost importance. As you approach the scene, mentally prepare yourself for resuscitation. Ensure the safety of the surroundings to prevent injury and then activate EMS. Remember, in basic life support, the focus is on early CPR and quick defibrillation. Secure the airway during CPR. Basic airway maneuvers include head tilt chin lift maneuver, jaw thrust maneuver, or a pharyngeal airway, nasopharyngeal airway. Avoid using oropharyngeal airways when dealing with conscious patients. Advanced airway maneuvers refer to endotracheal intubation and insertion of supraglottic airways is an alternative to endotracheal intubation. Routes of drug delivery For drug delivery, prefer intravenous or intraosseous routes. The endotracheal route is discouraged due to its unpredictability. Familiarize yourself with the appropriate drug doses and administration methods for different situations. Non-shockable rhythms Non-shockable rhythms, including asystole and pulseless electrical activity, indicate that the heart's muscle is not functioning correctly and unlikely to respond to defibrillation. When encountering these rhythms, follow these critical steps. Administer 1 mg of epinephrine intravenously or intraosseously as soon as possible while CPR continues. Consider advanced airway placement and waveform capnography. Continue to give epinephrine every 3 to 5 minutes if necessary. Alternate 2 minutes of CPR with 10 second rhythm checks. Pay attention to the quality of CPR, aim for end-tidal CO2 of at least 10 mm of mercury and ideally above 20 mm of mercury. Shockable Rhythms Shockable rhythms, such as ventricular fibrillation and pulseless ventricular tachycardia, require a different approach. When dealing with these rhythms, Defibrillate as soon as the AED or defibrillator is available. After defibrillation, immediately resume CPR for 2 minutes and establish intravenous or intraosseous access. Check the rhythm again and repeat defibrillation if needed. Consider advanced airway placement and capnography. Administer amiodarone or lidocaine as appropriate. Address any reversible causes of cardiac arrest, including the 5H and 5T. Symptomatic bradycardia Symptomatic bradycardia is characterized by a pulse below 60 beats per minute with associated symptoms of inadequate oxygenation. Symptomatic bradycardia requires a specific approach as listed below. Assess the appropriateness of the clinical condition and the presence of symptoms. Identify and treat the underlying cause, considering hypoxia and toxicologic causes. If necessary, administer atropine, dopamine, epinephrine, or transcutaneous pacing. Consider expert consultation and transvenous pacing if symptoms persist. Be aware of potential causes of persistent bradycardia including myocardial ischemia, toxicologic drugs, 
hypoxia, and electrolyte abnormalities. Take-home message Time is critical in cardiac emergencies. Act promptly to save lives. Ensure the safety of the scene and prevent injury. Focus on early CPR and quick defibrillation in BLS. Oropharyngeal airways should not be used with conscious patients. Properly position the mask during CPR. Intravenous or intraosseous routes are preferred for drug delivery. Endotracheal route is discouraged. Minimize interruptions during CPR after delivering a shock. Targeted temperature management is used after the return of spontaneous circulation. Confirm asystole twice in two separate leads. Immediate defibrillate ventricular fibrillation and pulseless ventricular tachycardia. Treat reversible causes of cardiac arrest including the 5H and 5T. Capnography is a valuable tool in resuscitation. Aim for end-tidal CO2 of at least 10 mm of mercury and ideally above 20 mm of mercury. In conclusion, immediate recognition and intervention are crucial in cardiac arrest or symptomatic bradycardia. The sooner treatment is administered, the higher the chances of positive outcomes. By following these ACLS guidelines, you will be well equipped to confidently respond to cardiac emergencies and improve patient outcomes. Remember to stay updated on the latest guidelines and engage in regular practice to ensure you are prepared to save lives in critical situations. Thank you for watching and best of luck with your continued studies. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.